Hello, hello, hello again, all of my beautiful friends from the internet. I hope each and every single one of you is having a uh, wonderful t- uh, day, uh, wonderful Tuesday morning or whenever you happen to be listening to this podcast episode, whether that be morning, evening, or night. Welcome to the Reddit Asks Us, uh, Us podcast. Uh, I am your host, Luke Dick, the podcast we read and react to comments from r slash ask Reddit. Remember, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you get your podcast, please, please, please leave us a rating and also leave us a review. You have no idea how much that helps the show get uh, get spread. It's uh, it's it's amazing that people have been have been doing it as much as they have been doing it. And uh, don't get me wrong, I absolutely appreciate when uh, when y'all do that. So thank you all so much. Remember, if you're listening to this episode in Spotify, you can answer this week's Reddit question by going to the description of the episode, and in the description description you should see a white icon that says reply and you can reply to this week's uh, question with whatever response that you may have and uh, you will be notified when your response is published and I will read out the responses aloud on the next week's following episode remember you don't really have to comment anything necessarily if you don't if you don't have anything to say or answer to about the most recent question you can always just say that you know if you enjoyed the show or just gen- comments in general are always appreciated, and I will indeed read those aloud on the show. So thank you all so much for doing that. Um, so why don't we hop into last week's episode? So last week's episode was, what secret was revealed when cleaning out the home of a deceased family member? And I figured there'd be less responses for this, because that's a pretty specific, obscure question. But... Um, uh, the first one comes from the green changeling. Love the show, but hope you will cover a question I can actually answer. Maybe next week, eh? I this this week's episode, you you might be able to answer this one. This one is it's not it's not entirely unheard of. Um, next one comes from stressed human, not deceased, but I was cleaning my grandma's house and I saw a bullet hole in the floor. Long story short, my papa shot shot a gun into the floor one Christmas. Merry Christmas. Boom! You know, it's just it's the it's the classic tradition of Santa's shotgun. Like that really kicks off Christmas. You know, it's not it's not it's not Christmas unless Sh- Santa's shotgun's there. Just not it's not gonna hit the same. You know, it's it's gonna be a shame when if your grandpa passes away and there's no one to just you know shoot the Christmas shotgun into the floor. You know, get get the holidays nice and festive. Let's get everyone on their toes. You know, Christmas is a time where we all need to be on the you know, we need to be alert and aware. You know, it's winter, things are dangerous. You know, it's got they got we got, you know, pretty got nasty weather, at least if you're from Canada. Um so you got to prepare, you got to keep you got to you got to stay alert and aware and awake. You know, it's, that's the that's the whole idea behind the tradition of the Christmas shotgun. You know, you just you just got to really really get that adrenaline pumping through your veins. You know, be really excited for Christmas. Uh, next one comes from Alex D. Great episode at Like Always. You should bring on Sam again sometime. Those episodes are always my favorite. I saw, I told Sam that, and it's funny, because Sam and I are literally roommates, and we see each other, like, all the time. We literally <laughs> hang out all, all the time. And, yeah, it's just, it, we, it, we've been both really busy with school, so it's, sometimes it's really hard to coordinate times to do the podcast together, but if you haven't listened to any episodes with Sam, please go and find an episode. The, like, the last episode that Sam was on was in... The summer. It was late August, I think, or sometime. Yes, I think it was late August or sometime in August was when uh, when Sam and I did our last episode together. But yeah, we haven't done one since. But my episode, the, that my those episodes are always my favorite too. I love Sam being on the show, and Sam is a really funny guy. So uh, he he always brightens up the the show and adds some some really funny uh, anecdotes. So uh, yeah, I will get Sam on again. We'll see if I can get Sam on again before the Christmas break and we all leave back to our respective homelands. All right, and the last one comes from Phil Savannah. What's going on, Phil? Uh, Phil, not me, but someone I knew said their cousin was cleaning their brother's house who passed away of a heart attack and found all their passwords in a notebook. Bitcoin had 4.3 million. What would you do? Oh my God. I mean... If it's your brother's house, I mean, that's that's. I think that's Bitcoin's kind of free game at that point. I'm not a crypto guy, so like, I think I'd probably just, you know, I'd probably just, just take the money out. Like, I probably wouldn't invest it or anything like that. I might invest it in like, like in a not in cryptocurrency. That's for sure. I'd invest it maybe in something else, but 
I uh, I think that Chris, I think that cryptocurrency is pretty fair game. But how do you like? How do you explain that? Like, you gotta, you're probably freaking out. Like, oh my god, I just found 4.3 million in Bitcoin. You gotta, you have to like, if you really wanna be a, if you really wanna be a crappy person, you gotta, you know, make sure that no one else knows what Bitcoin is. You know, especially the older folks. You know, just be like, oh, it's a video game currency. Yeah, no, yeah, don't even, yeah, I wouldn't even bother. Don't even, I wouldn't even look it up either. Yeah, I wouldn't even bother looking it up. It's like a fake thing. It doesn't even, yeah, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't take the money from your family. Just a joke. Anyways, <laughs> why don't we hop into today's episode? So today's episode, again, comes from our favorite, uh, our favorite subreddit, Ask Reddit. What's something a weird guest did in your home and you don't know how to react? The, yeah, the, this is, I have some stories about this, but I definitely don't want to like, I don't want to make it too obvious who I'm talking about, but I just, well, cause I have people who know people and I say, ah, may, maybe I'll refrain, but there's been some pretty eh, interesting yeah, interactions that have happened in my houses. I've had a lot of people, maybe this isn't necessarily as weird, but I've definitely, <laughs> I don't want to shame anybody, but I've definitely had a lot of people uh, puke in my house. That's for sure. Like even when I was living back in Saskatchewan and, and when I was in high school and stuff, like it's, I've dealt with a lot of puke folks. Let's just say to the least. Um, all right. First one comes from taco X bell. Friend of mine had his buddy house sit for his family and the dude set up all the Christmas decorations in the summer. What a demon. Like so everyone's like, everyone in the comments is like, Oh, this is such a funny joke. Their face must have been pro- like priceless. Like, what did he? But did you just like leave after that? He was like, "Ha ha, pranked." Saw the look on your face. Um. Anyways, I'm gonna peace out now. Uh, because by my understanding, I was just here to house sit. So now that the house sitting's over, I I don't I don't really need to be here anymore. So have fun cleaning all that shit up. I'd be like, what the fuck? I paid you to do this. Like, I already paid you the money. I already e-transferred you the money to watch my house. Like, you don't you, you don't think you have to clean that up? No, bro, that's the that's the prank, dude. That's the prank is you, I set up all your Christmas decorations. Uh, you're welcome because that took actually a while to set up. Now you got to take them down. That's the whole prank. You got to, you know, I, that's that's the prank. So, but you're not even going to be here to see that. That's just like extra work for like no reason. Really? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm on board with that prank. Next one comes from Sujimoto. Number uh, Sujimoto three. They ashed their cigarette on the floor and then got really, really mad when we asked them not to do it again. This is just what this person has some. Uh, like, I think this person has m- more problems than just that. Like this. This that doesn't even. It's number one. It's already like no one smokes inside their house anymore. This is like just where where is this person from? Like the nineteen fucking forties. Like, come on, who smokes? I don't know. If, I don't know if people have been smoking in their houses like since straight up since like the nineteen eighties. People stopped when they started realizing that that cigarette smoke is like horrible for you. So like, it's just like everyone does it. It's like I don't really think you have a great grasp on on the whole, you know, campaign against cigarettes. You know, there was like a whole massive thing about that. It was literally a giant thing. It still is a huge thing. That cigarettes are like terrible for you. And smoking inside, secondhand smoke, you didn't hear about any of this? This is pretty big news, I would say. This is pretty pretty obvious information. It's like, don't be don't be an asshole. Where, am, where else am I supposed to stomp out my cigarette when I'm in someone else's house? All right? the The floor is the perfect place. It's just there. It's just right there. Then I don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, just clean it up. It's not even just vacuum. Come on, you just don't clean your house. It's it's more it's it's more it's it's more shocking to me that you don't clean your house because you think that cigarette stain is just gonna stay there. Come on, you gotta you gotta clean your own house. Paul Swimmer replies and says, "I think just smoking in someone else's house is insanely rude in general. That smoke stick sticks to everything, bruh." When I used to paint houses, oh my god, I painted this one house. Holy crap. They they had been chain smoking in their house for like 30 years. Maybe even longer. The ceilings were brown. It took us like four coats of paint to 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 cover it up. 
And then they like got mad at us because it wasn't fully covered. It's like, bruh, you, if you really want this to be clean and white, you're going to have to tear this thing down to the foundations and build a new home. That's the only way that this is that this problem is getting fixed. Like this is not just solved by a coat of paint. Oh yeah, I smoked in my house for 30 years. Why don't I just cover it up with a coat of paint? And it just, oh, the smell. We had to keep the windows open the whole time. It was so bad. It was so, so nasty. Um, reply from Redneck Rafter. This makes me cringe to this day. I'm at a house party talking to the host who I'm, whom I did not know. In my half-lit lit state, I light up a cigarette and we continue talking. I ash into my old beer as we as I didn't want to get up. Uh, I personally hate when people leave cigarette butts in them. So after finishing the cigarette and knocking the cherry off, I, I at him, I ask, where's your ashtray? He looks at me and says, I don't own one. We don't smoke in the house. I got awkward. I asked him why he didn't yell at me when I lit it up. He told me he seemed so con- he told me I seemed so confident when I lit it that he didn't want to say anything. To this day I feel bad about it. Nah. Bruh. I mean good it's good you feel bad about it. You should feel bad about it, but you can't just light up a cig in someone else's house. That's not even that this that hasn't been acceptable behavior in like forty years. Like the, 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 where are you living? What time period do you belong to? This is just I'm I'm shocked. All right, next one comes from Paul Swimmer. My aunt, uncle, and cousins took a vacation out to my area once, and we invited them over for dinner. I haven't seen them in years, so I don't know my cousins very well. Well, this is like fucking National Lampoon's set up here. One of my cousins, upon entering our home, immediately started quietly walking into every room in the house and started opening up the closets, dresser drawers, and cabinets. There wasn't anything he could stumble upon that was embarrassing or valuable, and we didn't want to make a scene, so we kind of just let him have the run of the house. My aunt and uncle acted like this was just a normal thing. Later on, I called my mom and asked about that, and she said, Oh yeah, that kid is super weird. We have to lock all of our bedroom doors when he comes over. He tends to just rifle through people's personal lives. He doesn't take anything. He just likes to snoop. People are strange. And then in the edit, he said that, No, he is not autistic. <laughs> Nice. Okay, that that would that would make it a little bit, you know, understandable. But even if he was, it's like you should still probably be parenting your child not to do stuff like that. Just oh yeah, that's just him. He just pokes around, you know. Hope you don't have any personal items in your bedroom, like you know the place where you all of your personal items are, all all the things that you you know want to make sure that are kept away from people. You know, because everyone has personal stuff, you know, it could be files, it could be, you know, just things that we all have that generally, you know, we want to, not necessarily want to put out on the, on the dining table, if you know what I mean. Yeah, there's a reason why those things are kept away. What a weird thing. And it's weirder that they had nothing to say about it. Like, they're just like, it just, like, if they got mad, it's like, let him snoop through your stuff. Come on, he's curious. You want to, you want to. You want to hinder a child's curiosity? This is just... That is unbelievably selfish. Okay? He is exploring the world, and he just needs to learn what other people have. Okay? He just got his... He's got to... He's got to socialize himself within the world. He's got to figure it out for himself, you know? That's... Jeez. It's... It, you're, you're, you're hindering a child's learning right now. Next one comes from Greg the Pigeon. I was getting ready to leave for work. My husband had already left for work, and my husband's friend who spent the night was still there. We don't really like people being in our house when we're not there. Not that we are distrustful. It's just weird to us if someone is going to be at our house for eight a house for eight plus hours doing whatever. Very normal. So I grab my car keys and say, "All right, time for us to leave." And he just says, "Okay, bye," and starts rolling a joint with my weed. <laughs> I wait till he's done, take it from him, and say, "Thanks." while putting it behind my ear and holding the door open for him. After you, see you later. Apparently, this was offensive enough that he called my husband to tell on me. My husband obviously was like, uh, my guy. She brought, she bought that with her own money and told you to leave. So, leave. This is like, this is the problem with stoners, man. Stoners just think that every place is a communal place to smoke weed. Like, like, uh, see, the cigarette smokers, that's definitely died down. The cigarette smokers understand this is like, yeah, yeah, you go outside. Yeah, go, yeah, you don't do that inside. Don't go, don't, don't do that here. The joint, the joint smokers, the weed, the weed smokers, they just pull up and they just pull up, start rolling a joint, just lit it up, start smoking it. It's like, bro, 
you're just stanking up the whole place. The place reeks. Weed is a way stronger smell than cigarettes. It's, like, permeating. Like, you made this whole place smell like the inside of a fucking skunk's ass. Okay, like, you just can't, you can't stink up the house like that. It's like, nah, it's, it's just weed, bro. It's like I'm smoking a cigarette. It's just weed. Relax. It's like, okay, well, you don't get to impose your weed smoke on everyone else. I don't think that's, I don't, I don't think that that's, that's, that's common courtesy. But, and, uh, and they just treat like, oh yeah, if I smoked here once, it's like, I can just come here whenever to smoke up. It's like, no, we both have jobs. Don't you have a job? Don't you, you want to go somewhere or do something? I'm not trying to make a stereotype out of weed smokers, because I know lots of weed smokers who get a lot of shit done. But I'm just saying, there's, there is that subset of, of weed smokers and, and potheads, and they just, like, they don't give a fuck. They're just, like, probably just, like, hang here. <laughs> it's like, well, what are your plans for the day, you know? Uh, I gotta go to work. You know, my husband, your friend, he left for work already. Like, what, what do you, what do you think of, what do you do? Do you want to ride somewhere? Nah, I'll probably just hang here, honestly. It's pretty chill. It's pretty cool. Yeah, my mom kicked me out, so she told me never to come back, you know. <laughs> Mom's fucking so annoying. But whatever. And she said she wasn't going to cook for me tonight. So you know, I'll just probably stay here. Maybe just eat here. Just, you know, just lounge. You guys got a big TV. So probably just like watch something. It's like, mm, well, here's the thing. How about you get the fuck out of my house? Okay. How about you just get the fuck out? <laughs> Next one comes from Leaky Eddie. That's an awfully descriptive name. I had an extra ticket <clears throat> for a chef-hosted pop-up dinner. Pre-five menu, cocktails, wine included. Called a buddy that's a chef knowing he'd appreciate it. We start hitting the drinks hard, but he was lapping me and got very drunk. We went to two bars after. Neither would serve him his drunk ass. So I said, let's walk to my house and sleep it off. Had a few at the house and went to bed. Woke up in the morning and he was gone, but left a kind note on the counter. Found another note in the coffee maker and another in the cups. We were finding notes of love and gratitude hidden all over the house for weeks. It was really sweet. Oh, this is... I don't know what to think about this. You, the way you set this up made it sound like your friend is an alcoholic with a destructive habit and tendency here. And so my very alcoholic friend is like the best kind of alcoholic. It's very destructive to his life. He gets kicked out of bars very often, you know, he's disgruntled, you know, he, he gets angry and violent, but he leaves these really nice thank you notes around, you know, often saying, sorry, I beat the shit out of you last night. I just was blackout drunk and I don't remember it, but thank you so much for letting me crash on your couch and you're the sweetest person ever. And you know what? Sometimes I just think to myself, I... You know, I would be the bad person. And he tells me this kind of often, too. He says, I'd be the bad person if I didn't, like, forgive him and just, like, keep hanging out. That's what he says, right? He says, you know, that, that like, I'm the one who's being unreasonable, right? Because he's the one apologizing, right? So, you know, he's the one going out of his way to say sorry. So it's like, if I don't, if, if I don't keep hanging out with him and, like, letting him do his thing, then I'm just, like, not being a good friend, right? I'm not, I'm not accepting him for who he is, Right? Sometimes we just have to accept people for who they are. Just gaslighting the fuck out of them. All right, next one comes from you have a username. They let their child get red sauce all over my furniture. Turn and tell me that number one, I should have, I shouldn't have red sauce pasta as an option for dinner at my home. Yeah, yeah, turning it on me, yeah, gaslighting the fuck out of me. And number two, they saved me because my child was going to ruin my furniture at some point. Anyways, gaslighting again. I was pregnant at the time. Well, you clearly are going to be a horrible parent if you think that your child wasn't going to get red sauce on your couch anyways. Would you really think you're capable of being a parent? I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but I think I might have to report you to CPS. All right? Like, I think this is, this is, this is bad parenting, and I just don't think that you, you have the... Uh, you have the capability to be a parent and to parent to the fullest extent. I think it might be better if... You just, maybe just give the child over to me. I'll raise it right, you know. I'll I'll raise it with the knowing that obviously they were going to spill red sauce everywhere. And you know what? I don't, I don't cook things with red sauce. See, that's why I'm a better parent than you are. 
That's why I'll always be a better mother than you are. Because I just don't cook with things with red sauce. Only an idiot would cook things with red sauce. Okay? So let's just get that. Let's just get that straight. All right? So, you know, it's it's important that they that we teach our children these life lessons. They're just, you know, they're, they're going to be kids. Kids will be kids, right? If you just can't handle the kids will be kids, probably shouldn't have them. Probably be a terrible mother. Terrible mother. Next one comes from Here for the Snacks. My college friend came down to my dorm sobbing because she couldn't stop sucking dick and then came and then and then sorry and then proceeded to eat my roommate's mac and cheese out of a pot while crying between spoon, spoonfuls. I was speechless. What? The, to be honest, I don't really see a problem here. I don't see what the problem is, okay? As long as it's not destructive, and I'm not just saying that because I'm a guy, okay? Relax. I'm just saying, is this really that destructive? There, I think there's a lot worse, worse things you could be doing. I think there's a lot of w much worse addictions you could have. All right, we're in the age where we need to stop shaming people for doing stuff like this, okay? Who cares? All right, if, if she wants to do it and it's consensual and everyone is vibing in the environment and it's a, it's a good vibe, I don't see the problem. What's the deal here? Okay, we need to, we need to not be shaming people for doing stuff like this. This seems like a, it seems like a fine happy thing. Like I said, you could be a cigarette smoker, okay? If you were a chronic, chronic giver of blowjobs or a chronic cigarette smoker, I think I'm choosing the, I think I'm choosing the giver, all right? One is really terrible for you, you know, bad for your health. It's a burden on others. The other one is, it's kind of just a good thing to do. Just kind of, it's a just generous thing to do, all right? Just a nice, a nice gesture, Right? As long as everything is, like I said, under the right conditions, you know, making sure everything's safe, consensual, I think that's one of the, you know, it's probably one of the better habits you could have, right? I, I, I don't see, foresee yourself losing a lot of friends that way, you know, unless you, you know, are doing it to someone who's dating someone or like your boy, your friend's boyfriends. But other than that, I mean, if it's just, if it's just people, then... I think you just go ahead. I think it's not a, I don't, I don't see how that, I, I can definitely see there's much, there's, there's, there's definitely worse things that you could be doing, but I think it's worse though, that you ate, that the, they ate the roommate's mac and cheese. That's kind of where I'm drawing the line. All right. You're crying about an issue that, you know what? It's debatable whether this is really an issue, right? There's, there's, there's room for debate. If she genuinely thought she had a problem, then okay, all right, then we can talk about this. But I think that her, Going and just eating the mac and cheese is 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 probably I would say the the more disrespectful thing. All right, it's the more it's the more habit problem she should probably be concerned about. You can't just go eating people's mac and cheese. Okay, this is this is serious business. This is this is mac and cheese. Okay, this is this is one of the staple foods of our of our of our time. Okay, the mac and cheese has persisted through the years okay this is uh this is this goes back to ancient times folks we need to we need to preserve the the sanctity of the mac and cheese okay this is a sacred food if we don't have mac and cheese then what do we have what do we have okay we've lost all shot at democracy at fair and equitable treatment egalite fraternite you know this is we've lost it if we cannot respect the the, the the ownership of the mac and cheese. Okay, we this is this is the real problem we need to be talking about. Next one comes from Traditional Energy Seven. Our friend had his aunt over for uh, over from somewhere, and we started inviting over the inviting them over for some drinks. The aunt started rubbing my leg under the table. I just sat there talking, trying to ignore it. My wife went went into the bedroom to do something, and our friend followed her, making a move. It was literally like they had planned it all along. Hence to say, we had never had anything to do with them ever again after that. This is a weird thing. Your your friend coordinated with his aunt to like seduce you? What kind of, what's the vibe going? What is, are we sure this is an aunt? Are we sure that your, that your friend wasn't just like, you know, trying to, trying to break your relationship? I wasn't even, I don't even think this woman was his aunt. 
I'm, I'm starting to think that this was a higher, this was a paid hit. Okay, this was a strategically planned effort. Okay, I, I think that this is just a, this is a ruse. Okay, I think there's there's some plotting, maybe scheming even to to split up you and your wife. And I think your friend, your your friend is, hey, my aunt's just touchy. She just likes touching. I wouldn't worry about it too much. But I'm gonna go hang out with your wife. Why don't you hang out with my aunt? She's so cool. She is super chill. All right. She makes these really salty drinks. You know, they hit really hard, like really hard. So just be aware for a salty flavor in your drink. It's totally normal. What? It's totally normal. Just the way she mixes it. Some, she's got a special recipe, but don't even think about it, okay? Don't even worry about it. So just have my aunt's salty tequila, and then just have fun. And I'm gonna go hang out with your wife, and then we'll just, we'll we'll just see where things go from there. How about we do that? All right. All right. Next one comes from R T Psych. Had some friends over for a housewarming party. One of them went into my bedroom and put my CPAP mask on, uh, on his junk. Oh my God. And sent me a picture of it three days later. See, this is, this is the type of shit I do not find funny. People, I don't, I don't understand the humor in that. It's like, yeah, I put my disgusting dick and balls in your CPAP mask. Like, look, that's so funny. Bro, I'm, I want to punch you in the face. Okay, that is not funny. Okay, that, that is like not even close to being funny. All right, that's disgusting. That's horrible. You should go to jail. That's assault. All right, that's like, that is sexual assault, harassment, and just any, anything. That's anything. I don't, that's all the above. Okay, this is just way beyond. I just, yeah, people who think that that type of shit is funny... That, they, I don't, I just can guarantee you that that, they're, they're probably not going to go very far in life, All right? If that's, that's, that's their peak moment, All right? That's, that is their, they are on cloud fucking nine when that is going down. They're like, this is it. This is it. I've reached peak comedy. I've reached peak human existence. Okay, no one has done this before. I am a revolutionary. I'm a genius, Yes. Um, well, why don't you just keep doing that and see how well this works out for you? Why don't you do that? You know, I, I think if you try that at like a dentist office, I don't think they're going to find that very funny. I think you try doing this at the, in, at the ER. I, I think that you're going to have some big problems. Okay. And I don't, I don't think that this, this, uh, this habit or this behavior is going to be a, I don't think, I don't think people at large are going to find that very funny. You know, go ahead, give it a try. Let's see. Let's see how that ends up for you. That's fucking disgusting. My next one comes from The Joyful Joy. There was this guy, my husband and I, <coughs> excuse me, had met once before. We invited him over to watch a movie with us. We were new to the city and trying to make friends. He said he'd bring pizza. He brought a half-eaten pizza, and he asked to use our laptop. He was on Facebook the whole time and proceeded to fall asleep in our living room recliner during a movie. It was an odd encounter. I think that this guy's just a couch surfer. I think he was just like, yeah, I'll show you around. Just invite me over. Just all you have to do is invite me over. He just keeps working, inviting, inviting him over into the conversation. He's like, so, you know, after we tour um, City Square, you can invite me over. You know, we can hang out, have some drinks. And then, you know, if we go out and go I'll take you to the skating rink and then we can have me over. And then, you know, we can just, you know, maybe have a coffee after that and, and then, you know, in the morning, I can, we can get some breakfast, and you can invite me over, you know, and then, you know, we can, uh, you know, get some hot chocolates, maybe, coffee, you know, something like that. And then we go for lunch, and then you can invite me over again, you know, in the afternoon, and then, you know, I can just hang out, and then, you know, do whatever. And then later at night, we can probably have some dinner together, you know, I'll take, you know, take another walk, right, and then we'll go back to your place, right, and hang out there, and... You know, just do whatever, really, you know, and then I'll, like, you know, I can, I'll sleep there because, obviously, it's a multi-day tour, right? Honestly, I really think to get around, to get to know the city, it really takes, takes, takes a couple months. It takes a couple months, right? And, I'm, and I live far away, so it's probably just better if I just, like, crash at yours, you know, for the next little bit because you really just can't do the city in a couple days. It's one of those cities, right? Can't do it in a couple days. You really need the time, right? You really, you really, you really got to suck in every moment, just absorb every moment of the city, so... And I'll be your tour guide. You know, I'll be exclusive. I won't leave your side. You know, and then we can just hang out too. We can just hang out and then 
have a good place to sleep and just be chill. It's going to be so chill. It's like normal as fuck, you know. A reply from Sapphires13. When I have parties, I always extend the invitation to include sleeping over since people tend to be drinking. And I've had a few friends who've lived one to two hours away who would come stay over as well. Had one guy who came from to several of my parties. He lived over an hour away, so it was expected that he would stay the night. But he always ended up going to bed at like 9 p.m. After the party had barely started, I never understood why he was coming to my parties just to be sleep in my guest room and not be social. Um, I think he's just looking for a place to stay. I think he just doesn't have a house, doesn't have a home yet. He's like, ah, I live an hour away. I'm just gonna crash. And he doesn't. He doesn't have a place to live. He doesn't. He doesn't have a place to live at all. That's yeah. He's just. He's one of those couch surfers. Yeah. He's just using that. I think. I think it's. It's pretty evident after the fifth party that this happens. It's like, oh, you're not really here for the party, are you? You seem to kind of just. You don't drink. You know, you you said that multiple times that you don't drink. You actually said that you stopped drinking. So, what are you doing here? <laughs> Next one comes from And Then Bats. Invited a guy over for a game night. Start time was 7 p.m. or 7.30. He shows up at 6 p.m. I have a long driveway. He parks in the center. I have to have him move for a, other guests, of course. He comes in the house, and I try to gain insight into why he's here so early. He says he can't predict traffic, and it's better to be early. He helps himself to a Coke without asking. Then he asks me what streaming services I have. Then he puts on Star Wars, the Clone Wars animated series, and starts watching. He then asks for a snack, so I get him one. When everyone else arrives, he whips out his own homemade card game. We play until 9 p.m. on the dot, at which point he promptly stands up, proclaims he has to leave and does, takes his game with him too, and I still haven't recovered from this. This is just, well, it's, it comes an hour, hour and a half early. It's, you know, that's what they say. It's better late than never, right? Better late than never. I think this guy has like OCD or something. This is a, this is, this, I think this is indicative of, of some other problems. I think this is like, some, he's got some bigger issues going on in his life than just, you know, showing up to uh, card nights early as hell without knowing anyone. That's so funny, though. Just rips out the, the Coke and just puts on Star Wars The Clone Wars. This guy just lives his life wherever he is. He Wherever he is, he just finds a way to live his life. He, he needs a Coke, and he needs, he needs a Clone Wars. Okay, the Clone Wars and Coke is just, that's... He's, he's not... He's, he's in a forever a state of frustration if he's not constantly drinking a Coke and watching The Clone Wars. You know, he, he has to he has to live that life wherever he is. Uh <clears throat> all right, next one comes from M Van246. God, this is probably gonna get buried. But at some point before I was born, my dad ran a recording studio type of thing in our basement. Think an old soundboard, mics, instruments, that sort of stuff all set up. My parents were away and his friend stayed at the house to look after things and feed our dog. She was pretty crazy. Uh, maybe a four-year-old, uh, then maybe a four-year-old German Shepherd. When my parents got back, nothing was out of place or anything, but months later, my dad was on the computer in the basement and found a fully composed song that his friend had recorded in his absence, fully singing slash instrumentals about the dog. I was so young when I heard the song, so I don't really remember any more details than that, and the file itself has been lost to time, but it's still a pretty iconic story. He was just... Let's talk about inspiration. All right, there was just, he's never recorded anything in his life. He just doesn't play any instruments. And he just, just the dog, the, the mere presence of the dog just inspired him to write the song. Just, just starts playing the guitar. It's just like a gift from God. He's just like, I love this German shepherd dog in the morning. It's like, holy bro. You, you really like the dog that much. You just you just learn to play the guitar and like play the drums and layered vocals and how do you know all the reverb presets? Like how do you know this? How did you use all these plugins? This is like Pro Tools is like not easy to learn. How do you know how to use that? It's just it just came to me. It just came to me. I just it just shone down on me like a like I was given this 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 divine gift of knowledge. But only I can write songs about dogs. You can just only write songs about dogs. He has the power to write 
beautiful ballads, beautiful pieces of work, but they're just only about dogs. Only can write a song about a Labradoodle. That's pretty much it. That's as far as it goes with his music creati- creative abilities. It's like you are the best songwriter in the world, but you can only write songs about dogs. Well, you'd have an, you, you might have an audience there, though. You might have a niche audience, so maybe, maybe you should follow that divine talent given to you, shone down on you by the heavens. All right, next one comes from Walk the Ground. I had a college colleague turn up two hours early for a party once, brought his whole family. I didn't know this guy that well, but had basically opened the invitation to anyone at work who wanted to pop around. His kids didn't play with mine, and his wife barely spoke. Nothing was ready, and there was no food, and I hadn't even showered and got ready yet. When the designated time for the party came around and the other guests started arriving, they left. I've never invited them around since, and the rest of the party had a good old chuckle about it when I explained to them what happened. Maybe these people just don't exist. Maybe you have a... Maybe maybe you need to go to the doctor, man. Maybe you gotta get something looked into. I think this is the ghost of parties early. But what is it with these weird people showing up to parties early? Okay... I understand it's nice to be on time. All right, nice to be on time. Two hours to a party? That's aggressive. That's, that's, a, that's, that's a threat. Okay, you've now made me uncomfortable. Why are you here? This, like, you knew when the party started. I would rather have you like wait outside for an hour. Like, what are you doing? I'm not even ready. I'm wearing my like, like sweatpants, okay? Don't come here. Next one comes from Elizabeth. When my mom remarried, we had a small ceremony in our house and had a small spread of food, including a honey-baked spiral-cut ham that was the circumference of a dinner plate. Just huge green beans and deviled eggs. My Aunt Rhonda, my mother's sister-in-law, ate a stack of ham easily two inches thick and got a second plate with the same, ate all four of her kids' plates. The kids didn't eat much. And that pile that had been piled high ate 23 deviled eggs and packed up a third plate that had just about three inches worth of ham slices. We just kind of sat back in amazement. She's the hamburglar. All right, this is this kind of a very interesting relationship with ham. This might be a my strange addiction type of thing. My strange addiction type beat. Like this, that's a what's up with the ham? Like there's other food here too. There's like. There's ham, but there's there's turkey too. There's turkey. There's potatoes and corn and other vegetables. You don't just ham, just ham. That's really just that's it. No more than all right. Okay, you know, teach their own. It's all right, but I think you might you might be screwing yourself a little bit here with your experience in the bathroom for the next. If you keep doing this, this is gonna happen the rest of your life. Right, you might never go to the bathroom ever again. You're gonna have to get surgery. Okay, this is this is. I don't think you're 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 not setting yourself up for success here. Okay, I don't think a di- strict diet of ham is gonna be all that good for you. Next one comes from Gisgard Rake, a drunk person I didn't know once walked in front of my door, went straight into my bathroom, and then immediately passed out on the floor. Wow, this is uh. That's, I mean, there's worse things could happen. You're lucky that, that they passed out. All right. That's, there could be a, that, that would be a very ominous situation. So um, there could, worse things could have happened. I'll just tell you that. I'll say worse things could have happened. All right. So this one is a long one. Next one comes from No Stranger to the Rain. Guy was friends with my now ex-husband. Flew into town for an interview for a job. I got stopped picking him up from the airport because ex-husband was working nights. He insisted we had we had to stop at Sonic on the way home because he would flunk the interview the next day without a drink from there. We get home and I show him to the guest room and the guest bathroom. He tells me he needs to watch some TV to wind down before bed. I have to watch TV. I need to watch TV before I wind down. I'm, trust me, you do not want to see me if I don't have my TV. I, uh, I hand him the remote. Uh, wait, hold up. Um, I hand I hand him the remote to the uh, one in the living room and go to bed. I wake up several times throughout the night due to the surround sound, and he was watching war movies with the volume all the way up. I get up in the morning and walk into my living room. 
that has been completely rearranged. He moved every piece of my living room furniture and uh, to a new spot. Just the feng shui. I didn't like it. Did you realize this is wasn't great? This wasn't ergonomically set. All right, this wasn't. Uh, this just wasn't. This wasn't set up for. You're not. You are not setting up your room in the most harmonious way. So I just did your. I did it all for you. Rearranged everything for you. By the way, I went through your drawers. Why do you? Why are you keeping all this? Why are you keeping all your personal stuff in these drawers? You keeping these books? These seem like pretty private books to me. Okay, Fifty Shades of Grey, really in the in the the living room drawer. You know, what if someone? You know, it's just, it's not classy. It's not classy. You should probably keep that to yourself. Uh, when he comes out of the guest room to take a shower and get ready for his interview, he tells me. Uh, it flows so much better now, and that he watches a lot of HGTV, so he knows how to decorate. And then just before he leaves for the interview in an, in an Uber, he tells me that he doesn't really like shampoo and the shampoo in my guest bathroom, and I should get something better for visitors. I have no clue what he's talking about, so I go in after he leaves. Flea and tick shampoo was the only bottle in the shower. He left my dog. Oh my god! Left after my dog's last bath and clearly marked as such. He used flea and tick shampoo and got mad at me for it. He bombed his interview and my ex-husband took him back to the airport and I never saw the guy again. Guess the Sonic didn't work after all. That is such a. Wh where did these people come from? I think that this is what happens when like, when experiments are done. Like this person was just like implanted with memories. They were born in a vat implanted with with memories that like a computer software thought like was a normal person's memories growing up and then now they're just like this this is the result all right there been these people have been living among us all right they're they have been they they are they're uh we need to we need to spot them out it's like men in black all the aliens who who can you know disguise themselves as human beings all right this guy's a uh, this guy is a menace to society all right, this is a, it poses a, a significant risk. All right, I wouldn't want to sit next to a, someone like this on a plane. All right, sorry, folks. I had to put the podcast on pause there for a sec because we had a massive snow dump and there is a dude, a snow blowing uh, outside and it was getting into the show. So that was, I had to wait. Anyways, we'll read off a couple more here, but this one's from Kafka18. Uh, they brought their dog without notice and expected us to get rid of our cat's out of courtesy for their dog who hates cats and wants to murder them. Literally. I went through our house to sneak a peek at the rooms and went through our drawers and closet too. Like, WTF. I, do, <laughs> I don't care if you want to look at the house. Just don't be rude. I have quite the in-laws. Oh, also went through the house. They also went through the house. Um, yeah, you know what? We're, we're more dog people. So if you could just get rid of your cats, that would be, you know, ideal. You know what? Actually... It would be ideal. You might want to just put the cats down because, you know, I'm we're, we're going to be here a lot. You know, we're probably going to be here all the time. And, uh, you know, it's just cats aren't going to work. Cats are just they're not going to work. They just don't. Our dog doesn't doesn't get along with cats. So it's honestly probably just for the it's best if you just put them down. Plus, we don't really like cats either. So we kind of we kind of we we kind of prefer to see them. You know, let's just let's just let's send them off to better place. We don't, we don't, we don't really care for cats around here, so we're not gonna, we're gonna entertain the even on the idea, all right? It's just not, it's not something we're interested in in doing. Next one comes from Mike. I was a freshman in college. I had an off-campus apartment. At one of many parties, this guy comes up to me and says, "I spilled a beer on your carpet. It's okay though. I stepped on it. I had no idea what to say. We still joke about it occasionally. <laughs> I stepped on it." Okay, you just so you just further entrench the stain and squished it into my floor. You, that's like I don't understand. I I don't get the. It's like, what? It, it's that it probably honestly made it worse. Yeah, I stained your carpet, so I so I decided that I was gonna make it worse. You know, yeah, I accidentally painted your house with some red paint. So I just kind of smeared it around. I just kind of, you know, yeah. It's just it's now it's now it's kind of just like a splotch there. It's just kind of like all over the place. So it's not full coated, right? Obviously, but don't have the money for that. <laughs> but I just kind of, yeah. Just, you know, I was I was 
I was doing some paint. I was trying to paint a little shelf, and I accidentally outside, and you know, your house, and I just I got some on your on your siding, so I just kind of smeared it over. It's just it's it's fine now. It's, like, it's honestly it's aesthetic, right? It's, like, it's a cool thing. They call me Bubby. New one says, future brother-in-law unplugged our fridge to plug in a coffee pot. Didn't notice it was <laughs> it was all ruined. No problem. He didn't offer to cover anything. Has he? Is that something he does? Does he just do that? He just unplugs the fridge. Everyone knows you just unplug the fridge. Yeah, if you don't have the, if you don't have the, uh, the extra plug to make your coffee, you know, you just unplug the fridge. If you forget, it's a fridge. Fridges they run on their own, probably. Right. That's just that's the nature of a fridge. Right. It keeps things cold. Okay. What use is a fridge if you need to plug it in? It's like well, it's kind of. That's kind of half, that's how fridge works, really, you know. That's kind of one of the best inventions with modern electricity is that we can, you know, use things like a fridge. You know, it's kind of the whole idea. All right, why don't we read one last one? So this one comes from J. Double Blue. Invited a work friend over after our shift on a Friday. She asks if her new boyfriend can come too. Sure, no problem. Order sushi and crack some beers. He seems like a pretty normal guy, but keeps dripping all the soy sauce on the table. My girlfriend offers him a napkin several times, but doesn't want it. Hey, man, you keep spilling. Why, do you, why don't you take the napkin? He takes the soy sauce container and pours it on the floor. What the fuck, man? You have to clean that up. He takes the chopsticks, a gift from my girlfriend's mom, not the shitty wooden ones, and breaks them. My girlfriend starts crying. Guy laughs and says they were probably made in China. Obviously, I kicked him out and found out a month later that he cheated on my friend and sent her a, a explicit video of the event. Some people really do not deserve air. What the hell? This guy's this dude is just a menace. This guy is out here to to disrupt society. Okay? Yes, I, I agree. Some people is just like, really, just you know, if we have to if we ever have to just like put them under, maybe just give them just but maybe just leave that forever. Just, maybe just you know, eh. It's he wasn't working out. He really wasn't working out. Not not the greatest relationships built with that guy. You know. All right, anyways, we're going to end the episode there, folks. Thank you all so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Reddit Asks Us podcast, the podcast where we read it and react to comments from r slash to ask Reddit. I am your host, Luke Dick. Remember, if you're watching or if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcast, please, please, please leave us a rating. And also, feel free to answer this week's Reddit question uh, by clicking the description of the episode in Spotify. There's a white icon that says reply, and then if uh, you click that, you can reply, and I'll read that response aloud on next week's following episode, and you will be notified when your response is published. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you all and uh, be with you all next week. Peace out. Love you. Goodbye.